So we were at that hostage taking yesterday. And, uh. I remember that, yeah. That guy's got his knife to my throat and he's ranting on and on about his needs. And all I could think about was, boy, would I like a bubble bath. <laughs> I hear you, brother. McDonald of the kids in the hall, or as some of you like to call me, the kid in the hall we don't like. <laughs> That's okay. I realize I'm the least popular kid, but how can I blame you for making poor judgments if I don't present you with all the facts? Hey, if I want you to like me, I have to make the effort, because I realize you're busy doing whatever it is people without a TV show do. <laughs> so I'm going to reveal a little bit of me to you. I am going to show you how I sleep. Ah, uh, this is my bed. Uh, this, of course, is me at night. And you are about to witness how I sleep. Yes. If you look at me very closely, you can see my eyes moving rapidly. At this point, I'm dreaming about food. Of course I love you, Steve. <laughs> Do you have to put your shirt back on? I am told by many leading psychiatrists that most men have homosexual dreams, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're homosexuals. I like the ladies, and the ladies in your town are the most beautiful ladies in the world. Am I right, guys? Okay, back to me sleeping. What goes on? Ah, I, uh, I usually flush, but I'm getting uh, more conscious environmentally, so last night I peed in the blue box. <laughs> Do you like me yet? Are you learning about me yet? I guess I just shut up and let you watch. Enjoy! Enjoy! Oops! I find the other kids in the hall come across a little sexier than I do, but I've always felt that I've never been lit right. Well, last night, I finally found the right lighting system to bring out my inner sexiness to you. Hmm. <laughs> hey, good looking. What you got cooking, sir? Sexiness, that's what. <laughs> well, I hope you understand me a little better now that you've seen how I sleep. And I think you'll find me a little more attractive with my new lighting system. Hey, speak of the devil. <laughs> yep, I'm sure the cards and letters will come pouring in now. Yeah, oh, yeah, you got a letter. Gee, thanks, Smokey. Hey. From my old school, Humber College. I'm going to use this lighting system a lot from now on. Dear Mr. McDonald, this letter is in reference to the $5,000 student loan you still owe us. Well, my first fan, and she goes to college. we ever looked like that. Oh, Jean, I can't believe that we thought that we looked good like that. <laughs> Put it away before we're reminded of how much time has passed. Oh, but Hilda, you've got nothing to worry about. Oh, my gosh, you've done so much with your life. 
I mean, you design your own jewelry, own your own store, and you married that wonderful French man from Buffalo. Oh. Oh, me, I'm just stuck here in Brampton with Doug. Oh, stop it, stop it, Jean. You know, you are just a treat. Oh. You know what I love about you, Jean? Your constancy. You never change. Oh, I've changed. Oh, you have not. I have. You have not. I have. I'm more afraid of things and I'm less tolerant of other cultures. <laughs> well, I must confess we are all getting older. <laughs> oh, yes, but this helps. Can mm -hmm. I get you another cup of instant? I would love one, dear, but you let me get one for you. Oh, well, thank you, Okay, Karen. stay oh, put there, Pat. Oh, Gee, there's mm? a photo of a lovely woman on your fridge here. Who is that? Oh, that's Doug's mistress. I keep her photo on the fridge to help me lose weight. Oh, my God, Jean, that's terrible. Oh, well, don't judge her too harshly from the photo. I mean, it's not a great shot, but what can you expect from a surveillance camera? Oh, my God. Oh, Jean, you had him followed by a private detective? Oh, no. I had her son, Bob, follow him. Oh, Jean, Jean, dear sister, Jean. What Doug is doing is just plain rag, and you cannot tolerate it. You have got to confront him with this news. Okay, just let me lose another 10 pounds first. Promise. Promise? Oh. Whose goddamn Lincoln Town car is that sprawled all over the driveway, huh? Oh, it's Hildegard. I should have known only an American would drive a boat oh. like that. How are you, Hildegard? I'm fine, Doug. Uh-huh. Well, if you ladies will excuse me, I'm going to go upstairs and shower and cover my body with some talc. Jane. Jane. Uh, no, really. Jane. Doug. What? The jig is up, Doug. Jig. Oh. Who took this picture? Bobby. God, the kid's got no talent. Not at all. Well, I'm off the showers. Jane. Doug. What? Oh, dinner? Is it dinner? No. I want to know what you have to say about this. This is serious. Oh, come on, Gene. I'm a middle-aged man. I'm going through a bit of a phase, okay? Don't you read your magazines. It'll pass. Well, when? Hmm? Gene, honey, do you know what I like about you? My constancy? No, your patience. So don't go losing the one good quality that makes me love you, okay? I mean, standing here looking at you, I almost feel guilty. It's that close, baby. Aw, oh, he's Gee. almost guilty. You're gonna put up with that? That's a lot from Doug. If my Louis came home, Excuse I Excuse me, Hildegard. Yes, Doug. Would it not be fair to say that over the years you and I have not gotten along particularly well? Yes, that would be the case, Doug. What is the point, Don't Doug? you see what's going on here, honey? No, I don't. Oh, come on. She's trying to drive a wedge between you and me. You know why? Because underneath all that hate, she wants me. <laughs> yes, she oh, does. Yes, yes, that you. is the laugh oh, in the head. You've century. always wanted this. Oh, you think you're my mother? I'm getting my bad evening to yours. Not if you were no, the no, last man on earth. Come on, you've you had your head. chance on prom night. She was all over me. Oh, my God, Jean, oh, we were all so ooh, drunk, ooh. if you remember, dear. That's okay, Hildy, but if you could do me a favor and get the hell out of my house. Oh, I'd... my God, Jean, no. Could you just get the hell out of my you house? Let your oldest friend yeah, leave before, before I cold get cock get the hell out of my house. Come on, get out of my house. Come on, get out of my house. James Key, go home. Back to you, go home. Yang Key, go home. Yang Key, go home. Well, you think you know who your friends are, eh, baby? All right, honey, uh, look, I want you to know in a couple of minutes I'm going to go out to the backyard alone and I'm going to burn some motel receipts. I just wouldn't feel right deducting them now. I appreciate that, Doug. No, you would, sweetie. So, what's for supper? Chicken and salad, back on my diet. It's so boring. boring. Yeah, everyone seems to be hanging out and just standing. Yeah, standing. standing around in the same old way. Uh, Why can't people stand differently? Yeah. yeah. Now we come to the payoff. This town should shut up. This town should wake up. This town should get up. And stand in the new style. Make your move. Hold your whole city. It's out of the question. If you're hanging out with the crew, listen to this year important lesson. Stand in 
Father, what of this place called Vegas? Vegas? Well, Vegas is a noun. Is it a town or is it a small dog barking in the desert? No, Las Vegas is a town, but it is not for you to know of. For there you will find only men in cheap suits who drink their paychecks and sweat money. You do not like this place, Father. You are swift, my son. I have taught you well. Now, away with you. Father? Yes? What of the man they call Shecky Green? <laughs> Shecky Green! You have been reading my books. You know the elders forbid it. I know that you were there, Father. You were in Vegas. They called you something like an MC. <laughs> yes, it is true. I was a master of ceremonies there, yes. And they called you not Father, but by another more colorful name. Johnny Go. <laughs> Is this not a picture from that time, Father? I will not see this! Why, Father, what happened there? I was roasted. Did it hurt you, Daddy? No. Roasting was a good thing. Why, on the night of my roasting, many came to sit at the long table. Why, there was the great Francis Albert and Dino and a man who feigned drunkenness most humorously and F. Brooks, I believe. It was grand until I got up to speak and then... All that came was silence. Silence is good, no? Yes, silence is good. But funny jokes are even better. <laughs> and when they saw that I had none, this man, this tourist, heckled me. Hecklers, I have heard of this breed. They lived in trailer parks and ate canned peas. <laughs> My own father heckled? Yes. I will go to Vegas and answer the heckle. No! <laughs> you must not. You cannot. A heckle is not to be undone. You are not equipped. Yes, I am equipped. I will answer the heckle with my act. You have no act? Yes, I do, Father. My jokes are strong and true and varied in their topicality. Why, my friends find it funny. No, no, you do not understand. The heckle of a child differs greatly from that of a tour group. And besides, there's many other... No! Other... Tell me the heckle that sent our people here. It is my birthright! <laughs> if that is your wish. That is my wish. <laughs> Stand tall. Don't pop your peas, and above all, feign the confidence. I am ready. So, good group. Have you ever noticed that when you're a young child, there are many things that you do that you wouldn't do when you're older? For example, you never see an elder sleep in a cardboard fort. Ha, 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 ha. 
uh, an even better example is that... Hey, you there, in mid-sentence, I have drunk many beers, and your act, it displeases me. Well, then, why don't you and your stoop... Do I come to your chantings and, um, uh... Yeah. So you think you're great, eh? And... <laughs> I have failed. No, you have not failed. You have bombed. And that is an honorable thing. It was a difficult heckle. Even if it did come from a man with a low sperm count. Father, your comeback, it glows. I wish I'd thought of that 40 years ago. 40 years ago, wouldn't we all like to go back there? I hear your words, Elder. But do you not recall a time when I used to express them thusly? When I was young, when I was free, I had a dream where it hit me. The songs of Johnny Go! Yes, the same. I could have known, I could have known. Hi. As I'm sure you're all aware, there's a movement amongst archaeologists to attempt to reconcile the biblical account of history with the archaeological record. Now, I'm an intellectually curious young man with, let's face it, no real job. So, I've done some exploring of my own in this vein. The Bible tells us that Christ was trained as a carpenter, but in my most recent digs, I found artifacts that show he was not a very good carpenter. <laughs> this chair, for example. One of the legs is significantly shorter than the other three. This causes a certain degree of wobbling and a more subtle defect, no lower back support. Over here we have a table. Now this table has only two legs. Now I've conferred with many leading contemporary carpenters and they all agree that three is the bare minimum required for stability. Observe. Even taking into account the primitive times, this portrays a shocking lack of craftsmanship. Now, over here, we have this. And frankly, I have no idea what this is. For a while, I thought it might be a spice rack of some sort. But watch. If I take this jar of crushed cumin seed and place it here, clearly, if it is a spice rack, it is not a spice rack of the best ilk. Conclusions. Yes, Christ was a great philosophical and religious leader, perhaps even as some maintain the Savior or Messiah. But it seems clear that he had few career options. As a carpenter, he was incompetent. He would have been unable even to construct the simple crucifix upon which ultimately he met his martyrdom. Now I know that these views are going to be controversial. But I am also aware that if Christina Applegate were to express them wearing a halter top, you'd eat it up. Thanks. Can I talk to you about something? Sure. So my daughter's thinking of becoming a cop, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know what to tell her. How old is she? Seven. Tell her to wait. You're right. Wow. Isn't everybody quiet? You all seem so serious. Come on, we should talk. Jerry, why don't you tell us about your week? It was all right. It was all right. Come on, Jerry, share. <laughs> it hurt so much. Uh, we all hurt so much. But I'm not as strong as you guys. I think I should go. That would be a mistake, Jerry, and I think you know it. But I really have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we all have to go to the bathroom, Jerry. But we're not going to go to the bathroom, are we? And why? Because, because we're, we're not, not going, going to be tyrannized by our bladders. All right. All right. Exactly. The tyranny of our bladders. 
And how much time have we wasted as bladder slaves? Too much, oh, Too much. Oh, boy. Too much. Lot. But from now on, we're going to face it, fight it, and win. <laughs> but we have to talk. We have to help each other out. Come on. Come on. But I really think I should go. Well, then you don't belong here. Excuse me, Tony, but when you first came here, you were out of control. You were going three or four times a day. Yeah, sometimes first thing in the morning. I can't believe I had a life. <laughs> yeah, but you're living now, aren't you? Oh, now. Now I'm living free. Oh, living free, yes. Boy, yes. Living free. free. Yes. Living free. Yes. yes. Okay, let's talk about our substitutes. What we're doing okay. instead of going. Tell them what's your substitute. Well, when things get really bad, I like to think of the ocean. Oh. Oh. Bad choice, Tom. Bad choice. Bad right. choice, Tom. Oh, bad choice. Very bad. Very bad. Tony, what do you do? Well, uh, my divorce keeps me pretty busy. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. Works with me, too. Really, Tony. Nathan, what's your substitute? Well, uh, actually, I go. I've, uh, I've been going. And when did you do this last? Well, just before the meeting, actually. Oh, oh, you don't belong here! Sorry. Wow. Come on, people. Think about that car ride. This car ride is called life. And if we want to make good time, we're not going to pull over. No. All right, Nathan just pulled over. Yeah. But we're not going to pull no. over, right, Tom? No. Yeah. Tom, you went? Yeah. How could you? I had to. But it was beautiful. <laughs> and the sound, as it rang off the porcelain, was like church bells. Church bells ringing on Sunday morn, with me beside my mom in a big hat. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. Any more surprises? A2, <laughs> <Hey>, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, just last night I was uh, having a drinking contest and I, I either won or passed out, whatever. When I woke up uh, this morning, I was in a, a puddle of urine. <laughs> now, I mean, it wasn't necessarily mine. My theory is that some guy, you know, broke into my trailer, squirreled his way in through the window, went all over me, and left. <laughs> I mean, it could happen, right? It happened to me. It happened to me. <laughs> to me oh i'm leaving Don't. jerry 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 listen to me jerry listen to me one more month what you're crazy am i crazy yeah. or am i the sanest person you know <laughs> a big hat a big hat excuse me isn't this the men's room oh hi what's your name Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Come on in. <laughs>